Welcome to the August 2022 edition of the Masterclass, How to Organize Your Photos Once and for All. <laughs> Seems like a pretty daunting task. And we've been helping people with this format since uh, September, late September last year, and we've tested it. And I feel pretty confident that the plan works. But what I've learned is it's not a quick fix plan. We have been accumulating photos for decades, even more, right? When we inherited pictures from parents and grandparents. So we are not going to fix our photo mess with a magic formula or a system, you know, that you can just whip out. It takes time and patience and um, a little bit of love sprinkled in there and uh, some discipline as well. So in the class today, I have just a, a, a quick agenda here. I'm going to have a quick introduction. We're going to talk about photo management options. We also are going to dive deep into the PIX plan roadmap. This is how we organize people's complete collections here in our offices. And it's also what I teach in our longer course. I will be touching upon the course and community that really takes what we are going to touch upon today and spends much, much more time in case it's something that you think you might be interested in. And we'll talk about that. We also will be answering questions at the end. So don't worry. If you have the question, you drop it in the comments because uh, if you have it, chances are someone else does as well. Okay. All right. <laughs> Introduction. First of all, Pixology. I just want to tell you a little bit about this company that we just celebrated nine years. And we started in 2013, Ann Matuzak, my friend and I, and we thought, Pixology, it's the study of life through your photos, right? I mean, biology is the study of life. So we thought it was pretty cool. And it's been a journey. Uh, we were, you know, things were clipping along good. And then the pandemic hit. And that changed our business fundamentally, uh, unbelievably. Um, and our, our team changed and we wore masks in our office and we did drop offs and we developed online education through our YouTube channel. And it was during that time I really learned what uh, a lack of information on how to manage your pictures there, there really wasn't much on YouTube that showed you how to do this work. So it seemed to evolve <laughs> as the pandemic wore on. And we learned that we needed to do more for people. So today, our team here at our offices in Milwaukee, we organize people's complete collections from the printed to the digital. And we call that our photo estate work. And it's very meaningful bringing people's lives back together by getting their photos in order, along with their videos and their audio and memorabilia and documents. Along the way, we are passionate about educating consumers and creating awareness because there are too, um, there are, there are too many technology options that are make it confusing and frustrating to work on pictures. So I know this was a picture from January. Today at Pixology, we've we've grown our team and I'm so excited to have these people here. All of us are passionate about helping you, you know, feel confident and motivated getting your pictures done. And whether that means, you know, going through some of the education we offer or actually hiring us to do the work, we are here for you. You're going to see more of these people on our YouTube channel, you know, sharing tips and tricks and answering questions. So I am so grateful for the team. And I'm going to have uh, Corinne and Tyler turn their cameras on and say hi, wave, um, because I don't I couldn't do this without all of them. So that's Corinne and Patrick there. Let me let me see if I can oh. make you a little bigger there. Um, I actually I might mess something up, but <laughs> I'm so glad you guys are here. And that's Tyler and Hannah was hanging out with him for a little bit. Um, 
these people make it possible for me. Oh, there she is. <laughs> these people, this, these team members, along with Debbie and Nick upstairs, um, and Nick might be here too. I'm not quite sure what, but I just want you guys to know um, that we're all here to answer questions for you. So, so you guys are off the hook. You can turn your cameras off unless you would like <laughs> to stay on with me and we will move on. My definition of a saved photo, you can find it when you want it. Number one, you need to be able to find that picture within a few minutes of looking for it. No scrolling through your phone, looking around the house for boxes or bins. You need to be able to find it when you need it. And you have to have it backed up in three places. At least that's what I say. And that's kind of overwhelming to think about. Well, three backups. I don't even have one. We're going to talk about that later. And my definition includes that you know the photo will be around for future generations. You know, the stories that we're saving today in our pictures matter, and they're going to matter for the future. And even the stories that we're saving from those who came before us, we need to preserve, preserve those as well. So, in the journey, we came across, by chance, the words that make the acronym for FOCUS. Um, it's very simple. We want to find it all, all our photos, slides and negatives, video, film, important memorabilia. We want to find it all, organize it, curate, use our photos, and save our photos. FOCUS is the acronym. It's the core of the PIXPLAN roadmap. Now, under the Use Your Photos area, I have the different things that we use photos for. We're editing them, whether we're cropping them or we're adding comments or descriptions. We reference them, we share them, and we create with our pictures. We create tons. The, the whole photo gift and the photo book industry is massive. We spend a lot of time creating things. At least some of us do. But in the process, we often are not giving thought to how we'll access the pictures we used for those things in the future. And, and that's what I'm here for. What we're here for at Pixology is really to focus on the other four letters of this acronym. And the reason why is because you're going to have projects like this beautiful slideshow. It's a like a five minute slideshow on the left and this page from a photo book. Uh, those pictures in that photo book were scanned by me back in 2011. And I gave the pictures back to my aunt who passed away. And my four cousins, all of her sons, you know, inherited sections of her pictures. And we don't know where these pictures of my great grandfather are anymore. So we use our pictures, but we don't have a way to come back to them. And you'll see the question below here that says, you know, what's the best photo management solution? Like, what could I have done 10 years ago, 11 years ago to save those pictures? What program should I have been using? And, you know, I hear it these days, too. What's the best program? And that is a good question. <laughs> so that's going to be the next section of our, our talk after I, I tell you, I walk you through the PIX photo plan road map. All right. In order to choose a photo management program, or solution, we kind of need to know the journey that we're going to go and how we might be using it, okay? So let me just give you a quick overview of the roadmap, and we will be going over this in much more detail, all right? So you don't worry about jotting everything down that I say right now. The roadmap starts with working on our digital photos. Digital photo organizing comes first when I teach people. I think people have a lot of technology challenges. And when you understand what to do with your digital pictures, you will have a better idea of what you're doing with your printed pictures. It's kind of easier to see the end of the journey, I guess. 
So the first thing is find it all. Find all your digital pictures. So that's the F. And then we go to organize. We're going to organize our digital pictures. And then we are going to curate them. So we have the FOC of focus. All right. And once our digital pictures are curated, we can have them be in a master family photos folder. All right. This folder is kind of central to our whole plan. We got to get them together. All right. Once they're in the master folder, then we can move on to the printed pictures. OK, so again, we're going to find it all. We're going to organize them and we are going to curate those pictures. And of course, you have to get these pictures scanned or digitized. So we have a little uh, stop for the scanning part of it. And once the photos are scanned, they get moved also to the master family folder. Keep in mind, I'm simplifying the roadmap just to kind of give you an idea of where we're going through this presentation. So we get our digital pictures and our printed pictures together in the master folder. And then this is where we have the option to choose a photo management solution. All right. We're going to talk about those photo management solutions, but I usually have people wait for this part because we take time to do all of this work. And if you try to load everything into a program, you're going to get caught up in something else and be gone for a few you know, weeks or months, you know, uh, you know, as priorities in life kind of take precedent over working on your pictures and coming back to a photo management solution may be difficult. So we are going to talk about that. But in this process, you see the FOC for digital and print photos. And our goal is to get it to the master folder and then the photo management solution. Then we get to use our photos in our system. I mean, clearly we're using our pictures all the time anyway. But in our, our roadmap, using your photos comes after you've done the work of organizing them, okay? Once they are, you know, able to be used, then the S for save your photos comes in. And I have seen people who don't use their photos for much. They just want to know they're, they're saved, preserved. So maybe after that master folder step, you know, they have the photo management solution and they go straight to saving your photos. It kind of happens at the same time with the system that we teach here with our roadmap. So that is, um, that's the outline of, you know, what we teach here and how we work with pictures. So <laughs> could a photo organizing program solve all the problems we have with managing our photos? I'm not sure, but I know that people need to understand what their options are so that they can make a, a better decision, okay? And that's what we're going to talk about next is the photo management program options. In my experience, I've come across four types of programs for managing pictures. The first is a file manager program. And the second is a file viewer program. And I just want to point out the word file refers to a single item on your computer, like a photo, a JPEG. Uh, a folder is what holds the files. All right, so I'll always try to keep that straight. So the file manager and the file viewer programs are the um, first two options. Then there are full suites of software to manage pictures. The photo management program is option three. And there are options to manage your pictures online as well. And there's a good chance that you probably have pictures in a couple of these areas already. So let's talk about how you have to be careful, all right? You can spend a lot of time editing photos, you know, cropping and 
maybe fixing the red eye and adding metadata like uh, a tag or a description. And you can spend all this time doing that, but then you find out that your changes are only visible in the program or app you were working in. Or you might lose all of the work you did when something changes. You get a new computer and you have to move your whole collection over to a new computer. Your folders you know, might get mixed up in the process or there's an update to a program that didn't go as expected. I always think about, you know, with technology, you got to remember Murphy's Law. Anything that can go wrong will. So be careful is what I, I always caution people. Now, the first type of thing that you can use to manage your pictures is the file manager program on your computer. So this would be a program <laughs> that we should hopefully all be familiar with. On the PC, it's the file explorer where you look at your folders and your files. And on a Mac, it's your finder, all right? So I have the two icons there. And then I just have a, a listing of, of folders there. You know, this we're literally managing our pictures with folders. That's the file manager program option. Then we have the file viewer program. These are programs that view your original files and folders right on your computer. The edits you make are saved directly to the photo or to a copy of the photos. All right. And the examples that I have here are Adobe Bridge, which is the screenshot that I've shared. Some of you might be familiar with Picasa. A lot of people used Picasa, you know, in, in, um, before 2017, I think, is when Google ended it. Google bought Picasa earlier on and ended that program, much to a lot of people's dismay. Photoshop Elements works as a file viewer program. And the Windows Photos app is also a file viewer program as well. The third type of option is an actual photo management program. These are programs where you import and you manage your photos from within the software. And usually you have to export them to use them. So examples of this are Apple Photos for the Mac, Mylio, which is one of my favorite programs. You can see the screenshot of Mylio's calendar view. It has a fantastic way of displaying your pictures. And Forever Historian is another one. With these programs, you can add all of this information, but it's not necessarily easy to share it with people where the, the people they're sending it to can see if you've added descriptions or you've done facial recognition. You have to more or less be in the program and see the work that you're doing. You have to export the pictures if you want to make a photo book or some other type of photo gift. So that's the photo management program. Then we have online photo storage sites. So these are websites where your photos are stored and could be managed. Google Photos for Android users and even iPhone users often have, a, have Google Photos too just by chance or accident iCloud is the iPhone cloud storage, and that's the screenshot that I have shared there. It's uh, iCloud.com, and the pictures are there. And then SmugMug, Shutterfly, um, people are storing pictures on photo sites, like photography sites. Uh, and my favorite, and our go-to app that we use here is Forever Permanent Storage, which we'll be talking about um, in a bit. I just have a screenshot here just to kind of show you. We like using Forever because when you purchase storage through this company, you are purchasing the storage once and the company guarantees to migrate your photos and your videos and documents to the newest technology for your lifetime plus 100 years. So that kind of hits the save part of the FOCUS acronym. All right. There are 
a lot of options. And I spent a lot of 2020 and some of 2021 reviewing the different options that are out there because I really wanted to understand and be able to help people make good decision about what they choose. All right. So uh, you can go to the YouTube channel and see some of the, the videos and reviews that I've done. So I have the question, when's the right time to use a photo management program? So <laughs> I think you already saw it on the roadmap. It's after the organization is done, okay? So let's just hit the next button here. And we're gonna dive into digital photo organizing. So we're gonna start going down that roadmap in a little bit more detail. Digital photo, organize, digital photo organization for us here at Pixology starts with folders on your computer. I already said it's File Explorer on a PC and the Finder on the Mac. We work with three folders. We have a photos to organize, the scanned photos, and the master family photos folder. Everything starts off either in the photos to organize folder or the scanned photos folder, and eventually should end up in the master family photos folder. All right. And you could have these folders be on your desktop, assuming you keep your desktop clean and not cluttered with other things. Uh, some people choose to have them be in their pictures folder. It's these folders that we do all of our work in, in the FOC of the acronym. So F is find it all. And boy, do people have digital pictures everywhere. We are on two decades of collecting digital pictures. It's unbelievable how fast time flies and what we have witnessed. All right. So we have to get all those disks, the USB drives, old computers, current phones, possibly the past phones, emails, texts, camera cards, and online. There's so many places. And our job is to get all of those pictures to the photos to organize folder. And one thing I will mention is sometimes people have computers that don't have enough storage on them to collect all of the pictures together. And so those three folders might have to live on an external hard drive. So it's a little bit of a, an advanced problem for what we're covering today. But I wanted you to, um, you know, be aware that we need to know how much space is on your computer as you bring all of this stuff together. So there is a adapter in the middle there and there's a little copy sign. If you see the plus sign right on the adapter, you're copying the pictures from all these places to your photos to organize folder. You can get these adapters on Amazon or at Best Buy. I like to look for anything that has a lot of reviews like thousands of reviews and four and a half or five stars. OK, so you're collecting them all from the de devices and the places on your computers. So I just have two uh, smaller screenshots here of examples. One photos to organize folder has a folder with all the camera card pictures in it, all the Dropbox photos, the files from the computer, flash drive documents, <laughs> flash drive photos, OneDrive photos. So when you do this like the camera cards folder if you have five camera cards you're going to have inside the camera cards five nested folders camera card one camera card two or if you have the date of the camera card you can add that in there but you'll have a lot of nested folders okay and then the second example just shows iphone photos old dell computer pictures your job is to find it all and get them to the photos to organize folder. I am just showing a larger picture on the left hand side that shows more photos to organize. And you can kind of just see um, the different things that might end up in there that you want to clean up. The goal is to organize all of those folders, curate them, and get them over to the right side 
All right. So the right side is the master family photos folder. And you can see I have clean folders that are by decade or um, a couple topics there. If I clicked on those carrots that are kind of the arrows that are next to those folders, we would see there's nested folders in there. So the 2000s photos folder would have 2001 photos, 2002 photos and have, you know, 10 folders in there. The other important thing that I want you to notice about this screen is that I have two windows open side by side. This is a key skill to be working with digital pictures. If you can get two windows open, it's easier to move pictures around and copy them from devices. So that's uh, something I wanted to point out as well. So we work on getting all of those pictures to the photos to organize, you know, categorized by where they came from. And I think it's a good idea to make a tracking sheet. So this first column shows the location that we got the pictures from. You could have a line for a lot of areas. Some people I've met have um, four or five different Google accounts. All right. You know, we've been doing this stuff for so long. Sometimes we have multiple accounts with the same um, tech company. So you, you make a tracking sheet because you're going to need to take note of where you stop and where you start as you're organizing pictures. The second column is just simply that you got it into the photos to organize folder. And maybe if you had an additional question or note, you would you would also add it there. And you can just handwrite this, too. You don't have to have a, a fancy spreadsheet. So this is find it all and get it into the photos to organize folder. The next step is to organize these folders of photos. All right. And we are going to spend some time here. I, I, sometimes I think it's going to go really quick, but the folders will have such a variety of things in them and you know everything seems like it has a question but we want to try to be efficient about this we want to just clean the folders up we will be renaming the folders this is going to be a huge help and we're going to check the metadata to help name the folders the metadata of the photos you know are things like date taken and the size is important too as uh, uh, I just mentioned that. But in terms of organizing, we're really focusing on naming the folders and getting the date taken will help us name our folders. We will work folder by folder, renaming the folders with this formula, four digits for the year, two digits for the month, and two digits for the date and a description. So you literally go right in this example, you go to the camera cards folder, go inside it, and just start renaming the folders. Maybe you're going to break apart some of the batches of pictures so that you maybe have one month's group of pictures together. Okay, so you're going to use this formula. And I'm going to give you in a couple examples here. The left side is really confusing. And it's funny, I have met people who, um, I, everybody has folders with a whole variety of names. You know, all these years, we never really developed a consistent way of naming it. When you take the time to rename the folders, automatically these pictures start to just organize chronologically, alphabetically, okay? So I renamed them and on the right side, now I kind of know what I'm looking at. And I, I noticed that there's this pictures folder on the left. When I opened it and saw the photos in there, I could tell they were 2014 to 2015 pictures. You see how the formula works here um, on mom's 70th birthday since it was one day. Uh, and we had a bunch of pictures for the celebration, that folder, you know, got its own folder instead of just being 2012-2 February photos. Okay, so that's one uh, example. And then in this screen, I have two screenshots from File Explorer. And the left side is in the icon view. All right, so 
when you're looking at your, your files and your folders in File Explorer, and even on the Finder, you have choices in views. This icon view, you know, we can tell there's some, you know, we need to rename the folders for one. And I did that. Uh, and that's what's on the right hand side here. It's everything being renamed. And now we kind of can see what we're dealing with as well. Sometimes you won't have a date. Uh, and sometimes maybe you just have to go find the date and come back to it. But you can see how much more organized that looks. The next thing I want to mention about this screenshot is the, these folders have um, clouds next to them. It happens to be the Microsoft OneDrive icon. And when you see a cloud like that, it usually means your pictures aren't living fully on your computer. They're up in uh, the OneDrive, up in the Microsoft Cloud. And often, you know, I find people don't understand how that happened. I don't even know how it happened. Microsoft, you know, and, and OneDrive sometimes just does things with your pictures and you have to catch up and figure out, you know, what's going on. The other thing is, is the red X, that's indicating that something happened with those folders and they're not backed up, we don't know, we'd have to kind of explore that. So as you're in the folders, you know, you're going to be kind of doing a little bit of problem solving too. All right, I think that's it on renaming folders, except for a couple extra tips here. So there's the folder. If it's a mix of photos, don't try to figure out them right off the bat. Just type in random photos to sort so that you can move on to the next folder. We just want to try to get through as much as we can so that we can move to the next stage, which might help us figure things out. Use nested folders to keep it manageable. I was just working with one of our, um, our course clients yesterday, and she had 8,900 photos in one folder. 8,900 photos in one folder is horrible because you have to like scroll to figure out and then, you know, the computer slow to, to catch up with all those pictures. It's just putsy. So when you have a folder with that many pictures, you've got to split it up by year or year and month and, uh, and not be dealing with so many pictures at one time. <laughs> If you have an instance where you think they're duplicates, you can type something like possible duplicates in front of the name. That'll help us in the next phase, you know, when we're comparing pictures and trying to get rid of the duplicates. Once the pictures are, uh, you know, the folders are renamed, you can see on the right hand side what that might look like. So uh, in the camera cards, I've got four folders in there with some dates in there. Now things are looking a little clearer. Like we could compare that camera card 2008 July and August to the Google 2008 photos. All right. So this just doing this amount of work makes it a little bit easier to look at a lot easier. Okay. And if you do need a little bit of help with the metadata, like finding the date taken, there's a couple ways to do this. For you PC users in the File Explorer, you're going to want to be in the Details view. So you can see I have a list of my files, and I have date, and I have date taken. This column is super helpful, but it doesn't automatically show up there. You have to right click along the column headings here and then add the date taken column. And that will help you figure out the photos you're working with. So here I can see, oh, I've got pictures from 1993 and 1996. Well, I had to have change those dates. We didn't have digital pictures too much back in, in the mid 90s. So that must have been something that I did. And I could move those to a folder that was 1990s photos. And, um, and having that date taken column can help speed up if you have a file folder of 9000 pictures. When you're in the details view, the computer doesn't have to work as hard, you know, generating the previews of the pictures. So that is extremely helpful. 
Sometimes the date taken is missing, and that is unfortunate. Um, but sometimes, you know, depending on how pictures were transferred, copied, or moved around, that piece of metadata might disappear, and then we have to figure those out a little bit differently. On a Mac user, uh, on a Mac computer, the finder is not useful. It does not have the date taken column. I keep hoping Apple will add that as a possibility. So we have to kind of think about things differently. And you can see here in this example, this is you know a Mac folder in the details view. I have the name of the pictures are 2021-06 uh, road trip. And the date modified and the date created are from December, not June. So unfortunately, we have to do things a little bit different on a Mac. You can, um, on a PC and a Mac, right click on a photo to get the properties. And that's where you can see the date taken as well. So um, right clicking on a photo gives you a lot of options and properties can be helpful. I also want to point out that if you look down the left hand side, you can see the tags, you could add a tag and a comment. This is metadata as well that you, you can edit pretty easily in the PC file explorer. It's just not fun and it could be putsy. But I wanted to point that out. For you Mac users, we uh, do not have as much flexibility in the information with the photo. Uh, the Mac calls it um, get info, not properties. And uh, sometimes the date taken will be listed here, but um, not always. So we can use the metadata to help name our folders in some cases. Again, as you're working through renaming the folders in Photos to Organize, keep track of your progress, okay? Because life does get in, get in the way. And if you walk away and all of a sudden three weeks goes by, it's really handy to come back and see you know, what you've done and where you need to start. So that's organizing the pictures. We next will go to the C in the FOCUS acronym, which is CURATE. CURATE to me is like cleaning up. Um, you could also consider CURATE to be a really special role. Your job, you know, as the curator of the family photo collection is choosing the pictures that, you know, are important to save and pass on to the future generation. Being a curator of an art collection is a has there's some um, prestige it's you know it's it's a significant thing or a curator at a museum curating your family photo collection is a gift now in the sense of digital photos this involves deduplicating because we don't want to have repetitive pictures in there we don't want to have exact copies and we also need to consolidate those folders so that it's easy for the person looking at them in the future to understand, you know, what was going on in life. So that's curating the digital pictures. And it starts with deduplicating. You will want to have a duplicate finding program. The one I like for Mac users is Photo Sweeper. And the one that we've been using a lot in our group is um, the Duplicate Photos Fixer Pro on a PC. And it, it also actually works for Mac. When you use these duplicate finding programs, you want to run it many times in small batches. Now, you could run it on a folder of 9,000 pictures, and you might end up with you know 1,300 duplicates. Some people are okay with just clicking delete and getting rid of those duplicates, but I like to make sure that I'm deleting the pictures that, you know, are the poorer quality, have the wrong metadata on it, or are the tiny versions of the pictures. So it's better to run it in small batches. These programs also have an auto mark feature that allows you to just batch um, select pictures for deletion. And, you know, when you know what you're deleting and you feel confident that the larger pictures are being saved, you just feel better about the overall um, the process.
and you can, you know, not worry you're deleting something that's important. These programs also allow you to find and delete similar pictures. So if you're the type that is trying to, you know, get the best picture of, you know, a, a newborn baby and you have 50 pictures, well, these, these programs can help you maybe hone some of that down. Your goal is to keep the photos with the best metadata. That means the largest size and the original date taken. I have a, a couple screenshots that just kind of shows you the process. Uh, here is Photo Sweeper for Mac. And I have um, this top left picture is our, our dog Brody. And uh, it's selected for deletion. That's why it's got the, the, the brown and the trash can on it. And probably this picture below it is as well. When you click on these pictures, you get the path shown below the picture, all right? And I, I'm just pointing this out because understanding where your pictures are on your computer is important. And this picture happens to me in my Photos to Organize folder, Probable Duplicates, and then you can kind of go on from there. So I already suspected it was duplicates, and it was easy to tell the program those pictures can go first because we, we've identified that folder. Then I have a screenshot of Duplicate Photos Fixer Pro for PC or Mac. And you can see the process is the same here as well. Um, it just looks a little different, uh, functions a little bit different than the other one, but you can see the path below. When you select a picture, it gives you the metadata on the right side and you can you know, work with deleting pictures that way. So. Just wanted to give you an idea of what those looked like. The next part of curation is consolidating the folders. So this is where you bring photos from different sources together. You move the cleaned up folders and photos to the master family photos folder. Not copy, we never wanna copy pictures from the photos to organize to the master family photos you're gonna end up with a picture, you know, a folder, same folders in both folder, and that's defeating the process, okay? So we're moving the pictures from photos to organize to the master family photos folder when we're confident it's cleaned up. In this example on the left-hand side, I have the folder uh, done iPhone photos. It's actually, I think, empty, but I left it there because I wanted you to see that on the right-hand side, 2000s and the 2010s and the 2020s photos, those are all pictures that came from my iPhone. Now, Clearly not all the 2000s photo, photos because I didn't have an iPhone back in 2000, but you, I hope you get the idea. I was confident that whatever was in my iPhone photos was cleaned up and it was a good copy of everything. So I moved it to the Master Family Photos folder. I will delete this folder you know, now that it's empty but I wanted you to see the process. So then the next job is to go to Google Photos and maybe I'm gonna compare the 2008 photos there to the 2008 photos folder, which is nested in the 2000s folder and see you know, what's duplicates. So you're just work on cleaning that up. And you're gonna track your progress, okay? And, and here I just took, I wrote some notes down and I ended with, I'm done through 2016. <laughs> it says start here with 2011. You know, you might wanna review your note to make sure it makes sense because it seems like 2011 might be done and I should have typed in 2021. The, this is really highly, you know, simplified from the time that it will take you to do this work, okay? Um, I did put a column in for moving to the Master Family Photos folder. I have found in our course that the people who are working on organizing their digital pictures, it's usually taking uh, months, like, you know, three to six months or more because, you know, they can't work on this 40 hours a, a week like, you know, we can. You're working at it when you can find time. So taking notes of where you're at is really important. 
So that's the digital photos side, all right? We next then move to print photo organizing, okay? And again, we use the FOC in the FOCUS acronym. And I want to remind you, you have to focus because uh, getting through the pictures, there's so many distractions in a day. You've got to be able to set that aside and work efficiently, okay? And finding it all is the first thing you're going to do with printed pictures. So even if you take six weeks or a couple months to gather everything to a room and kind of keep an eye out, you want to bring it all together at once because adding pictures down the line is so much harder than if you had had them in the beginning. All right. And where do you have the print pictures? everywhere. <laughs> They're albums and scrapbooks, bins, envelopes, drawers, frames, boxes, baggy suitcases. We had a guy haul in a golf club suitcase. I never saw such a thing. And it had 200 of those mini albums with like 100 pictures in them. It was crazy. So you find them all and gather them together. All right. <laughs> Hopefully that's the easy that's an easy thing to do. I think, you know, when you find it all and you get it all together, take a picture of it and, and send it to us. We love seeing that. It's a big accomplishment. And, you know, you kind of have to celebrate those victories as you're going through this project. All right. Organizing all of that. We have um, kind of a, a two-step organization process in the organize stage here. The first is the first inventory and sort. And this is where you organize everything by decades and major categories and other media types. So you can see this, this huge table has tons of stuff in there. There's albums and frames and awards, memorabilia. There's even negative slides and film and video kind of tucked in there as well. So you want to divide it all up by decades and major categories, all right? and the other media types. So here is that same table with everything separated, all right? You can see film and VHS and negatives are there. We have a bin for heritage photos, bins for the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s. There's memorabilia. And there's a bin on the bottom that says unknown. You probably want to have a bin for unknown or mixed albums because uh, people, when they put photo albums together, didn't always, you know, <laughs> adhere to like a year. Sometimes it's a whole collage of pictures throughout the whole thing. Sometimes families have the year albums and then they have a whole variety of special photo albums they put together, you know, for some event and, and there's duplicates and all of that. When you have a mixed album, just put that in a group together as well. So you get through all of this. This first inventory and sort should be fast, all right? You do not want to spend months on this because if you're spending months on this part, the rest of it's going to be brutal to get through, okay? We want to be efficient and fast. So to give you some perspective, this we got this project back when Ann was still uh, here at Pixology, and Ann and I organized this. We went from that mess on the table to this in two hours. So two of us times two is four hours. Now we're, we're not attached to everything like you are. So um, it, I have found that people need a few days, maybe a week, but you don't want to linger on this. If you are lingering on this part, um, and you might need more help, <laughs> okay? And I mean that with all respect and, and, and love and joy, but I, we want to help you get this done, okay? So this is the first inventory and sort. All those films, videos, and negatives, that all gets set to the side, and we'll deal with that later. The next part of organizing is the second sort. Okay, so we take each of those bins, and now we start removing pictures from albums. We start taking pictures out of envelopes, and we start organizing the decades by years. All right. And then the other major categories get divided into subcategories. A good example would be, you know, you have a family member who had a really 
you know, a, uh, some sort of outstanding career that you want to make sure is reflected in your photo collection. So career could have been the major category. And then the subcategories might be, you know, nonprofit work and maybe, you know, um, professional education or publications that were produced. You know, you know, there might be videos of speeches. So um, career is an, one area that we see sometimes separated out from from the decades, as well as other topics too. So the second sort is breaking all of that down. This picture is kind of towards the tail end of the second sort of that same project, all right? And here you can better see now that, you know, we've removed all of that extra albums and envelopes, it's kind of coming together nicely. And we use blue dividers for the decades, green dividers for the years, and then the orange dividers we typically use in the third sort, which I'll be talking about. But the orange dividers are for months. So uh, I think the middle box, the middle darker box has a year like 1985. And then there's an orange divider for 1985 some month and it was like a trip. And when we come across those batches of pictures that are already separated by a, a trip or a special event, we're going to put an orange divider with that right off the bat because it was already separated. So this is the second sort. All right. And in the back, I, in the back table, there are more bins of pictures there. And those were the, the duplicates. So you're going to find duplicates because back in the 80s and 90s, duplicates and triplicates sometimes were free and, and why not, right? But then we never really did much with them. So uh, you, you're going to set all of those aside and you can even recycle the modern printed ones. So this is, you know, the second sort. We get it cleaned up by year and it's looking okay. Then we kind of shift from organize to curate, okay? And I have our little roadmap showing that. So we're kind of shifting to curate. Even though we are going to be organizing pictures again, it's a little bit more purposeful organization. Here you can see we have a few more orange dividers and now we're in uh, boxes. These are, are nice boxes from Michael's. You can get a dozen of them for like $50. And we just, you know, once you get things consolidated down, you can start thinking about what will you store the pictures in. So here we took each year and organized it, you know, by the events in the year, you know, what's Valentine's Day and you know about when Easter is and you know when the birthdays are, the holidays, the Christmas pictures or um, whatever, you know, events you're celebrating, you know, in the fall and the winter, there's an order to them. And when you bring that together, when you organize your years by month, it really makes a difference. And now you will see that collections of pictures come together. I don't know how it happens, but it's like, you know, over the course of 20 years, somehow people, it's like they shuffle their pictures and they're just all over. So now all of a sudden, you know, all of the Thanksgiving pictures come back together and now you see who really was all at the event. It's easier to remove duplicates, more duplicates, and, you know, the repetitive photos. This third sort is the longest part, all right? So we talked about that first sort where we, you know, organize it by major categories. The first sort goes quick. The second sort by years, that does take longer. So yeah, I, I, I could throw numbers out there, but everybody's individual. But the, the second sort could take, um, you know, a, a few weeks, a few months. Um, the third sort, going through it again and curating it. You know, this is where you're able to show the, the story of life evolving through a year. Um, it's, it's time consuming. And you're literally, you know, one shoe box holds a thousand pictures. So if you have, you know, one year that is uh, 500, like a half a shoe box, 500 photos, that takes a little while to divide up. <laughs> um, but when you go to scan them, 
you just it makes the scanning process so much easier because if if you don't organize them by month or you know at least a better flow in that third the third sort by by year when you're scanning you're going to be second guessing yourself you know on the order and then you're going to be working on re rearranging them while you're scanning which will slow that part down so it's the most time consuming but it is worth it these um, are archival photo boxes that we sell here at Pixology. They hold 2,300 photos, and um, they're, I think they're like around $130. And they are a nice way to display your pictures and they're photo safe and um, archival and all of that. I like to point out the two pictures in the middle. That is the same picture, is a duplicate, and it's so funny to me when you go back to those old pictures from the early 1900s. There are some people who had as many duplicates back then as, you know, we did in the 90s. Um, you know, some people really enjoyed uh, the photography and printing pictures. So that's Curate, okay? And, of course, the next step in the printed photos area is to scan all of that, all right? And I have, um, you know, just like the three options that I see most often is, you know, people might use their printer scanner. Uh, we love recommending the Epson Fast Photo 680W. This literally is a, a high speed scanner and you can scan hundreds of photos in an hour or more, okay? The other option is you can find a local company to scan your pictures for you. And we, we certainly have people who ship us their, um, their photos for scanning and even their other items for digitization. So you have options. If you're gonna do it yourself, you're gonna be looking in the software for a couple things, a couple settings. And each software it can look different. So I want you to look for, you know, the, that you are scanning your pictures as JPEGs. TIFFs, not common. JPEGs would be, you know, more likely what you want to do. They don't take up as much space and it's, they just process faster. And we recommend 600 dots per inch in general. Some programs allow you to create the folders and then name your files, all right? And I didn't really talk about this, but in that third sort, you know, as you're, you have all these batches of pictures, the names of those batches of pictures become the name of your folder that you're scanning the pictures to. And ideally you're just naming the pictures the same as the, the folder. So 1985 photos, it would be uh, the folder name is 1985 photos, or maybe you could do 1985 scanned photos. And then inside you have 35 1985 photos and they would be named 1985 photos underscore 001 through 35. You don't want to have to be rethinking the naming system. We pick one name and it's what we use through the whole um, process of scanning and in our, our plan as well. All right. After the scanning is done, you got that duplicate finder program maybe, and it's a fantastic time to use it again. You can run the duplicate finder program on the scanned pictures because you're going to have duplicates in there. We always find a good handful at least. And, you know, sometimes they just get filed in different years and, and that happens. You also may want to scan the folders um, that correspond to folders you have digital pictures. As I've mentioned, we are going on, you know, the two decades of pictures. We had digital pictures for a long time that we got the CD and we got the printed picture. So you could have duplicates that way as well. So you can run that a few times. And then when you're done with the scanned photos and you're confident, you can move them over consolidate them to the master family photos folder. So on the right hand side, you can just see an example of, you know, the, the structure I have, you know, my family groupings in the 1900s to the 1960s, there's nested folders in there. And then I have 70s, 80s, and you can see the 1990s and on. All right, so we our goal is to get it all to one folder.
oops, I went one too many there. So in the first part of our acronym, find it all, organize and curate, you know, we want to get all of our pictures to the one location. All right. And I just, just kind of showing this to you again, that now theoretically we have everything in, in one place. And this is a huge accomplishment to, to get through this. And I am finding that people need, you know, a good six months to a year at least to accomplish all of this. It is, it's a, a it's a journey, which is why we're so happy we have our roadmap and, uh, you know, just giving you some guidance on it because you don't want to make a mistake and have to go backwards and fix things. So here we are on the roadmap. And now, you know, we have everything in the master folder. And now we are going to put it in a photo management solution. So if you remember from our options, the folders is one solution. All right. And we have to have them on our computer. This is where we can easily back them up to an external hard drive. And if we don't have access to the internet, we still have our collection in our home. I also upload those pictures for the majority of our clients. They go up to forever. That is the one solution that we typically work with. You, if you put another program in there, it adds another layer that I frankly have had to help a lot of people clean out of, you know, over the nine years that I have been doing this. So simplicity is why we use the forever, um, the forever option. All right. And Again, I'm just putting the forever guarantee in there um, so that you can see that, you know, this company is actually putting a portion of that purchase price into a fund. And on the right hand side, these are the folders that I have uploaded to forever. It is the same structure as my folders on my computer. I am not rethinking what am I going to name them up in forever. Forever does happen to call their groupings of pictures like this albums. So my folders on my computer become the albums in forever. All right. That brings us to the combined photo collection. And wherever you choose, you know, the photos to live, um, this is where you get to go to the U in our acronym, right? It's the using your photos. And I know we've been sharing and sending them all the other places, but I wanted to just give you um, just a rundown of what using your photos looks like. Okay. And, and I get it. You probably know a lot of this, but just in case we're going to go over this, using your photos, editing them, all right, cropping in them, image adjustment, you know, doing the physical changes to the picture that you want is one area. You can edit the metadata, adding the tags, comments, or descriptions, even the date taken. And then for some people, those old pictures that might need restoration, that would be another area where you'd want to use your picture and to get a better version of it. I put up an example from Forever's um, editing view. You can see I have a photo, and then the options are along the bottom. And when I do the changes, uh, maybe I would, you know, crop this. Um, I don't know. I don't know exactly what I would do with it, but I would save the changes by clicking the upper right corner and forever will save the original plus the edited version. If I want to edit the metadata, this panel on the right hand side is the info panel and you can see edit info and I can change the description. All right, and then I can add tags and I can do that right from this screen. And it's just really easy. You know, we I showed you how to do it with the file explorer. Here you're getting to look at the picture while you're writing and um, and it's, it's enjoyable. This is on the computer screen. Forever does have an app where you can do it on your phone, but it's a little harder on the smaller screen. So, 
The other area, another area, is referencing your pictures, so photos for information, okay? And you can see I have an album here for health, the IDs and the cards. I had voice lessons, and I wanted to save those. And I just have a variety of things, including, like, a, a, a screenshot of my um, controls on my car on how to reset the oil change light, because the, they never do that, and I never remember how to do it. And I've got a gentleman here to the right. His name is Donovan Williams, and we're trying to find him. He was just really a, a significant person in my mom's life back in the 90s, and we've been looking for him for a while. We think he's in Minnesota, if anyone knows anyone there. Anyway, photos for information can include inventory. Like some people have um, pictures of their jewelry or their artwork preserved here or for insurance purposes. And, you know, it could be a variety of things and it's secure and forever. Uh, incidentally, some people put their power of attorneys in here as well. So it wouldn't be in the photos for information. It'd be in a, an album for important documents. But that's referencing. Okay. Creating with the photos, uh, you can make a shower curtain now. I, I'm sure I, some of you have heard me say that before. That's crazy, but um, creating is big deal in the, the world of pictures. Uh, if you do it on some photo sites, they may not save your work if you don't order for a while. They might delete your project. In uh, Forever, the projects are saved right along with your photos and your other media, you know, for right under that guarantee that they have. Forever has three ways to create. You can auto print where you just tell it to make something for you. And then there's a design and print. And there's even software if you really want to design something from scratch. So uh, that was creating. I'm sure you guys, you know, have, have had experience with creating something. Sharing your photos. This is another use of your photos. Um, it is best to send a link to download the full size photo, okay? And the middle picture shows a link from my husband of the arch. When I get that link, I can download the full size version of the photo. Below it is just a smaller version of it. And that is not going to make a nice 20 by 30, you know, canvas print because um, it's going to be too small. And sometimes these text pictures are too small to even make a good four by six print. So you want the link. All right. And on the right side is just from an iPhone where um, 16 photos were shared and it created an iCloud link. If someone sends you a picture, you want to ask them for a link so you can get the full size photo. When you receive shared photos and you, you know, hold it down on your phone to save it, it usually will save to your photos app and on your computer, it will save to your downloads folder. Now, I have to tell you, um, I, the sharing feature on Forever has special, special meaning for me this week. Um, we, we had to say goodbye to our family dog, Brody. Uh, and it was really a tough time, 13 years with the family dog. I have tagged all of Brody's pictures, you know, along the way. And I had to catch up, to be honest, when we realized, you know, that things were um, not going well for him. And... Uh, I was able to share that tag, you know, in forever. I'm showing you the back side is the phone share option. Um, there's a little arrow that is at the top, and that's the share. When I clicked that in, in the tags view, so there's a, a way to tag your pictures. And then when you click on, when I clicked on Brody's tag, I had 500 files. I shared that link to my family, my husband and two kids. And we have literally been just paging through the memories of pictures that we have of him. Sharing, you know, in this way was so special. When you're in the computer version, you can also share a tag. So that's the screenshot I have in the front. And with Forever, you're sharing the link. So you know your family is going to get the full-size version when you send it. 
So that was using your photos. And I, I just have to tell you, um, the, the next day, you know, after we said goodbye, I had a Coke and I had my M&Ms and I texted my husband. I said, it's my grief therapy. And he replied back, mine's just going through your forever link. So I, um, I was really touched by that. And, 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 you know, these pets are just so, such a special part of our lives. And um, I know some of you have a lot of pet pictures and um, they're important too. Just not 5,000 of them, okay? <laughs> so um, I also wanted to just point out in forever, you can create with auto print, all right? So there's my, my tag with Brody and all these pictures. I clicked auto print at the top right there. I picked the book and I picked the pictures I wanted out of the 500, I just picked like 30 and I clicked create and it made a book for me. And I was able to switch pictures out. That took like five minutes because I had done the work of organizing everything prior. You know, when you can do this for any celebration in your life, uh, whether it's a graduation, you know, a celebration of life, that that's part of the power of having organized photos. So this is the plan. You, you've got the use your photos. We've covered all those ways that you can use it. And the last part of that acronym is save your photos. So there we have our, you know, our family tree. And the family tree is what it's all about so that these future people in our, our world, you know, will get to see our pictures and our stories and maybe the videos and all of that. So in the save your photos, I'm just giving you a pitch here. You, you can do this and you know you can. I, you just stick with it and that's what we're here for. Photos celebrate life. They connect generations. They strengthen families. You know, when you can see the hard times that you go through together, kids have more feelings of connectedness, belonging, even resiliency. It's so important. And photos inspire, you know, my husband worked his way through his grief over losing Brody. And he's like, you know what, we need, we need another, we need another Cocker Spaniel. So I, I think we're inspired to go to visit, um, visit some puppies this weekend. You know, you just never know how photos are going to impact people. All right. So saving them so important. We've talked about my definition. All right. I, I want to just tell you the a little bit more about backing it up in three places. Okay. Manual backup where you physically copy those folders that you created to manage your collection on your desktop, the photos to organize, scan photos and master family photos. And you copy them to an external hard drive. So this left example is the external hard drive. Okay. And then you have an option for automatic cloud backup. And I use iDrive, it just backs everything up on my computer. There's also an option to automatically back up to an external hard drive where you don't have to copy them physically over yourself you know, every time that you want a new backup. So those are three options. You wanna have one in the house, one outside of the house, and then the third one. I like manual backup and automatic backup. And then my third is in forever, where they are guaranteeing to protect my pictures and memories, videos, whatnot for a hundred years plus um, my lifetime. So that is the backup that we use there. So that is the plan, all right? And I promised in promoting this class, I would talk about the tools you need. We've talked a lot about tools. So I have one slide that just kind of talks about what you need. In, in our system, you need a computer and that's just the way it is, okay? Um, external hard drive for backing up and then the high speed scanner. If you wanna do the scanning yourself, you need that, all right? Or you hire somebody. OK, and then the programs that you might end up using, you have your file explorer or finder. You need a duplicate photos finding program. I put on XNViewMP. 
It's a free program that allows you to rename folders and files as well as convert files because you're going to come across some formats that uh, you can't work with real easily and forever permanent storage. Okay, so I just want to kind of wrap things up and then we're going to get Corinne ready for questions. So you can come on, Corinne, whenever you're ready. And I just want to tell you um, in this slide here, I have given you our roadmap, all right? But that roadmap is just the tip of the iceberg. And I, you know, it sounds simple, um, but maybe it doesn't, okay? But it's the tip. The tough part about organizing your photos, and I don't know why those gaps are in there, but the tough part about organizing your photos is dealing with the tech challenges and other unusual situations your photo collection might have. Our PixPlan course offers over 12 hours of training, ongoing weekly live group assistance, and a supportive online community. And the course and the community are for people who have a digital photo mess and decades of accumulated printed pictures to organize. It's for those people who are tired of not understanding what our devices and technology are doing with your family pictures. And it's for people who are willing to spend time weekly for the next six months to a year or even more implementing the PIX plan, okay? And if you are interested, if it sounds like you, you are invited to apply for our course and the community. We have set aside a times in the next week to chat with you about your photo situation in a complimentary Zoom video call. It's about 45 minutes and we wanna understand more about the challenges you're having with your photos and, and to see if it's a fit, if you're a fit for the, the class. If you're interested, you can schedule it at, at that link and we'll get it posted in the, the chat. And we'd love to talk with you. I've talked with hundreds of people this way. And I always document what the struggles are that people have because I feel like we're called to help people on a higher level because if we don't, if we don't have people advocating for better solutions for our memories, that's kind of sad. So that's that's what we're here for. And, um, and that's kind of what I wanted to cover today. So I'm going to put the, the questions on here and I'll bring Corinne on. And well, <laughs> all right. And um, yeah, so let's, I don't know, do we have any questions in there? <laughs> all right, Corinne, you got to put your, you got to unmute. <laughs> there you go <laughs> okay i still don't hear you what is going on um hello, hello? <laughs> you know technology was just bound to get us one way or the other so <laughs> um why don't you know what put a question up on the screen for me you want to do that. Oh, good. Okay. Laura, thank you. I'm glad it was helpful. <laughs> All right. What else have we got? <laughs> oh, I tell you, technology is always something crazy, isn't it? Uh, and, you know, Corinne's been organizing people's photos for a long time. If you want to turn your camera and just show people who... Um, um, oh. <laughs> are on, you know, what you've got going on in there. That is about 20,000 pictures, I think. So, so, all right. Um, Corinne has messaged me, I think, that there are no questions. That always scares me. <laughs> I hope that you're not completely <laughs> overwhelmed. Um, and maybe this was a review for many of you. So we'll, we'll give it kind of a, a couple more minutes here. Oh, so Laura has um, iPhotos in the old program and the new program. How is it best to download from iPhoto? So um, first of all, iPhotos is the old program on a Mac computer, all right? And then the new program on Mac computers is the Photos app, all right? And probably the iPhotos in the old program need to just be exported 
from iPhotos into a folder. And you can export them by year. I find that helpful. So you're going to want to be in the all photos view and export them by year to folders in your photos to organize folder if you're following our system. And you're going to have to make a decision uh, where are you going to just uh, export pictures from the photos app on your Mac also to your photos to organize. Uh, and then consolidate them in one place. I happen to be an iPhone user, a Mac user, and uh, I do have all, all my current pictures from 2010 forward that I've taken are in the Photos app, but I export my pictures on a monthly basis to the Photos to Organize folder. And then I delete from that folder all the screenshots, the things that I don't need in my family photo collection. And that's curating it, okay? So I take that folder for the last month's photos and I move it to the Master Family Photos folder when I'm done and I upload it to the Forever site. I hope that helps. <laughs> All right. Oh, <laughs> Karen's been with for a while. I've outdone myself. Well, I had to I had to pray a little bit to the Holy Spirit to be with me today because we've had an emotional week. And, um, and I just have to thank the people who have submitted questions and thoughts along the way because um, I'm learning because you're sharing your situations with me. So thank you, Karen. <laughs> All right, then I think that might be it. And uh, please know, you know, we would love to have you um, have you uh, send us any other questions or thoughts that you have. If you're, you know, want to learn more about the course, you can um, you can uh, schedule that call, and uh, we'll be sending an email out probably tomorrow, which will have this recording and then the handouts again for you. And uh, we'll also have that link if you want to schedule a time uh, with us. So uh, thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Corinne, for moderating there. You know, sometimes I think I'm going to have hundreds of questions and, and, and it's really so much to process that you might think of the questions later. And I have a suspicion that we'll be live again one of these days soon and we'll talk again. Thank you again. You guys take care of a great rest of the day.